دعوتك ربي ومن لسواك فيا رب حقق دعاء من دعاك دعوتك والقلب في فرحة يناجيك يا خالقي في علاك وأنت البصير وأنت العليم لحال ونور الحجام ضياك رأيتك ربي في كل شيء فزاد اليقين بقلب رآك ففي الزرع في الضرع في الأنس بانت بدائع صنعك بعض نداك الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم ما بعد جزاك الله خير for waiting brothers and sisters downstairs inshallah we're about to proceed with our next talk um, with our very own our beloved brother our imam uh, Ustad Rashid Al Madani um, as most of you will be aware some of you may not um, Ustad is a graduate of uh, Medina Jamat Medina um, University of Medina Alhamdulillah uh, he's Hafiz Al Quran and he leads the salawat here for us um, he's going to be going through a topic um, characteristics of the um, the worshippers of Ar Rahman characteristics of the people who worship Ar Rahman who they are and what they do so without any further ado inshallah we'll proceed to our, our next lesson and I'll ask Ustad to take the seat Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim اللهم علمنا ما انفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا رب العالمين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارزقنا علما نافعا يا رب العالمين يا سميع الدعاء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh After thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salam and salawat upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we begin the lecture under the title the characteristics of the servants of the most merciful or the attributes of the servants of the most merciful khasailu ibadur rahman as we call it in arabic now ibadur rahman some of you may hear it in the recitation of the quran those who are from the huffaz al quran can anyone tell me where in the quran in which chapter this term ibadur rahman is Surah Al-Furqan. Al yes, mashallah. That is actually uh, at the end of Surah Al-Furqan. Yes. What is Al-Furqan to you? Distinguish, Distinguish between? From the right and the wrong. That is one. And the other one? Al-Quran. Al that is another name as well. Why? What is the dalil for that? You said Al-Quran, Furqan means Quran. What is the dalil for that? The very first verse of Surah Al-Furqan. Tabarak al-ladhi nazzal al-Furqana ala abdihi liyakuna lil-alamina nadhira. Okay. So, Ibad al-Rahman. It is in Surah Al-Furqan. Can anyone briefly tell me the history of uh, or the background as to why this Surah was revealed? Is it Surah Al-Furqan? No, it's not. No. Remember the, uh, the brother Al-Yarubi said something. I call him Yarubi because he studies Quran under me, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Yarubi said that distinct, uh, differentiating between Al-Haq wal batil So the root letters that I'm looking for in the word Furqan is, what are the root letters? Fa, Ra, and Qaf. Al-Farq. Eventually it is about differentiating between Haq and Batil. As we already established, eventually it is about establishing that worshipping of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first and the last. Differentiating between the Muslims and those mushrikeen during the time of Rasulullah in Mecca. Okay, those who also opposed after the hijrah. Okay, so that this surah can be, this whole Quran rather can be a warner. لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَذِيرًا Okay. Second verse, الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض ولم يتخذ ولدا. Just yesterday we had been through Christmas. One of the main themes of Christmas was what? Celebrating the birth of Jesus, Son of God. والعياذ بالله. 
ولم يتخذ ولدا الله سيز ولم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك وخلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا this is how the surah starts at the end of this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي جعل في السماء بروجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا Then Allah says وعباد الرحمن After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praising himself and giving us the, in, uh, the sign that in the heavens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you know stars as what as guards okay then we have what siraja siraj is another name of what those who understand Arabic no 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 siraj no 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 so Siraj. Siraj is synonym to Shams. What is Shams? Okay. So that is something that you learn that Siraj is synonym to a Shams. Okay. Look, the sun and the moon. Qamar, we already know that it is a moon. Bright moon, wa qamara munira. Okay. Wa huwa alladhi ja'ala al-layla wa al-nahara khilfatan liman arada an yadhakkara aw arada shukura. Quite often we have this conception that actually the whole day actually starts with the sunrise. Whereas for us Muslims, it is other way around. Brothers and sisters, please pay attention to it. As soon as the sun is set, the new day starts. That is Islamic tradition as it has been the tradition from the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. It is not something new. Okay. To people it would be new. Those who are not seeking knowledge, those no, who are not in pursuit of knowledge of Islam. So it is better to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created night first, then the day. Okay. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ so, Maut, pretty much it has resemblance with na uh, Layl. Okay, al haya it has resemblance with what? al nahar Okay, that is why Allah says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً What is Khilfa? Khilfa means succession. Succession. Khalifa. What does Khalifa mean then? Successor. Exactly. You see the, uh, uh, the uh, playing with the words, those who would understand slowly, <laughs> it would be something amazing uh, uh, to encourage you. Khilfa liman arada an yadhakkar. For such who desires to remember, aw arada shukura, or desires to show his gratitude. To who? Who deserves our gratitude? Who deserves our thana? Who deserves our hamd? Who deserves everything. First and foremost is ibadah. Then, if you think critically as to why you are in this world, you are in this world to do, to do one thing. Ibadatullahi wahdahu la sharika lah. As Allah mentions in Surah al dhariyat wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. As simple as it is. Okay. So if it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who deserves our worship, since he created us, since he allowed, uh, allow us, allows us to see, allows us to feel, allows us to breathe. And all the blessings and the best of all the blessings is what? What is the best of the blessings? <laughs> Al-Islam, the word that he said. Yes, you're right. Islam is not something from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, it has been from, Muhammad, uh, from Adam alayhi salatu wa sallam. Why? All of the prophets and messengers, they were Muslimin. Okay? Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the lineage of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam had two sons. The first one, 
No. Ishaq. The second one? Ismail. Only from the lineage of Ismail came one prophet, and that was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one and only prophet that came from the lineage of Ismail alayhi salatu was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whereas from the lineage of Ishaq alayhi salatu was all the other prophets and messengers, including Isa alayhi salatu was So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the blessings, we must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must follow the footsteps of those who were always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eventually that would lead us to be among those who are Ibadur Rahman. Okay. Now, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorifies himself, you would also see in chapter 76 verse 5, Surah Al-Mulk, Allah mentions, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحِ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ And remember, indeed, when we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ And we created them as what? Rujum, something to destroy the shayateen. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabarak alladhi ja'ala fi sama'i buruja. Masabih, buruj. Buruj technically can be, in the, in the current day Arabic, it is plural of what? Burj. Okay, jama' of burj. However, here buruj means something that is unreachable on the top and they are guarding. They are to destroy the shayateen. Especially those who, those who try to get and uh, uh, put their ears to listen to what is happening uh, 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 up in the heavens. Okay, that is why we know was sama'i wa tariq wa madraka ma tariq and najm thaqib. Right? This is why they are interconnected. So, qamar al munira. We already mentioned that about the qamar al munira. Allah subhanahu wa taala also says in chapter ten, verse five. It is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who made the sun a shining thing. So, diya and nur, two different things. One is shining thing and the moon is as a light. Walqamara nura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah, uh, uh, surah Nuh, أَلَمْ تَرَوْ كَيْفَ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا وَجَعَلَ الْقَمَرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورًا وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجًا See, don't you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the seven heavens, one above another, and has made the moon a light therein, and made the sun a lamp. Chapter 71, verses 15 and 16. Again, Allah deserves our praise. Why? From first heaven, from the first heaven to the second heaven. Journey of 500 years. Not to be calculated the way that we calculate 365 days a year in Gregorian calendar in this world. Rather, one day of those years to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is equivalent to 1000 years of this dunya. What is the dalil for that? Allah mentions in Surah Al-Sajdah, verse number four: "Yudabbir al-amr min al-sama'i ila al-ard, thumma yaruju ilayhi fi yom kana miqdaru alf sanat min ma taudun." Alf sanat min ma taudun. One thousand years of what you count, meaning where we are counting in the dunya. We don't count when we are up, have, uh, up in the heaven. وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنَ Meaning that and he has made the sun and the moon both constantly pursuing their courses. They don't even leave their courses. Chapter 14 verse 33. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in chapter 7 verse 54 يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا He brings the night as a cover over the day seeking it rapidly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Yasin, لَا الشَّمْسُ يَنْبَغِي لَهَا أَنْ تُدْرِكَ الْقَمَرِ 
chapter 36, verse 40. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many, many things about himself in the Quran. Now moving on to the characteristics. وَعِبَادُ Rahman And the servants of the most merciful. الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Of those who walk on the earth, هَوْنَا With humility. With humbleness. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ When the ignorant people address them, قَالُوا سَلَامًا They say what? Peace. Allah continues saying, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And those who spend night in ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ibadat of their Lord, سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا In sujood and in standing. Those who are in the habit of the uh, tahajjud, you will see them to be always long in standing. Whereas for us Muslims, last 10 nights of Ramadan, we see that we have the extra. After 8 raka'ah, we don't pray Salat al-Witr, we go for some more raka'at, depending on how long the Imam can recite, how long the surah can be, how long the Imam can last when it comes to ruku, how long can the Imam can last to when it comes to the sujood, right? Even that, majority of the Muslims, Allah al Musta'an struggle. Whereas, one of the characteristics of the uh, servants of the most merciful, you will see them always, when the whole world is sleeping, they are busy in the tahajjud. The they are busy in the night prayer. Okay. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ Some other characteristics. Those who say, Rabbana, O our Lord, Israf anna adaba jahannam. Avert from us the torment of hell. Keep us safe from the punishment of the hellfire. Inna adabaha kan gharama. Indeed, its punishment is ever inseparable, permanent punishment. This is not temporary. It is permanent punishment. Jannah and Jahannam exist. Those who deny it, they are not believers. As simple as it is. Innaha sa'at mustaqarran wa muqama. Indeed, it is evil as an abode and as a place to rest in. Why? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing us to breathe, to feel, to see, to enjoy all the bounties of the dunya. Yet we forget to do what? To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet you forget to do what? To do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even Allah Akbar, we don't say it. We find it really troublesome when we say Allahu Akbar. Unfortunate reality is this. This is really unfortunate. Why? Because we did not have the courage, because we did not choose to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There can be many justifications. But there is no justification when you are given the choice, yet you choose something otherwise. Allah is testing us all, even this pandemic that we are in. Yet Allah is allowing us together to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be in a majlis, in a gathering where Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa are mentioned. To be in a, uh, this gathering that is surrounded by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who would report to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. So much so that animals above, animals above the earth as well as the below, below the water, they make dua for us. This is the gathering that we're in. Yet, we are ungrateful. That is what will lead us to the hellfire wal billah. Opportunities are given when we do not seize that opportunity to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then of course hellfire would be there. So much so, so much so that Allah mentions in Surah Qaf, يَوْمَنَا قُولُ jahannam. Remember on the day that we will say to Jahannam, Halim Talati, are you fulfilled? Allah will say, Halim Talati, this is what Allah would ask. Halim Talati, are you filled? Have you had enough? 
Jahannam would, would say, وتقول, هل من مزيد? Is there more? Send. I still have a space. Send more. This is the reality that we are in. That is why Allah says, إنها ساءت مستقر ومقامة. Indeed, it is evil as an abode and as a place to rest in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions another characteristics of the Ibadur Rahman. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا And those who were spent, لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا Do not waste. وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا And they do not, they, uh, they do not uh, show extravagance. They are not stingy. وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا But are in a just balance between them. Not too extravagant, not too stingy. Balanced. This is about spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we are seeing the background that we come from, it seems to be like a showing off a business and a competition. Not just showing off, but also competition. So much so that people die. In Bangladesh, I, can, uh, I remember a few examples where a rich person just wanted to uh, donate. I don't know. Uh, I think most of us, uh, those who are not from Indian subcontinent or background, uh, you would not know. Uh, there is something called sari. Okay? You will see them is so long. I think 12 arms long. 12 arms. You are talking about 18 inches times 12. Okay? So do the math. To wrap the whole body. Yet, just for one sari, to wear it during the Eid, they came to a rich person's house who was distributing them. Everyone over another, one over another. There were casualties that became a show off from the rich. So you see this. And the other one is when you have too much money but you don't spend. Not even a single penny. Not even a single cent. Not even a single poisha in Bengali we call it, or in Urdu we call it paisa. Huh? That is a reality. Not even single girsh, those who understand Arabic. Wala girsh. That is a reality that we're in. So, the characteristics so far we have learned. What was the first characteristics? One of the uh, uh, first characteristics. What was the first one? وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّ نَصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا How many characteristics we found so far? If you are following. Come on. Jamaiki. Thanks. Four, four, five. Okay, start with start. Start with one. What is the first one? There is yeah. There is no order. So throw it. Okay. Number one. Number two. Ignorant person says salam. Yes. Yes. Those who are in the uh, in the in the in the qiyam. So it comes under actually. Uh, on, on, on the first verse actually. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُوا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِرُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا سُجَدُ وَقِيَامًا Those who do the qiyam, those who sujud, that is the second one. The third one? What is the third one? Yes, that is. So that is where we, are, we just finished. Three characteristics. So those who are humble on the, on the earth. Those who do not get involved in unnecessary arguments with the ignorant people. Rather, they say, peace, and make your way. Okay, shaitan likes those opportunities that, you know, the one who are humble, shaitan would like to trick them, always. Okay, so those who are following their footsteps of humility, alhamdulillah. Then, of course, those who are always into praying tahajjud. The third one we mentioned was about spending money justly. Okay. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ 
before before we uh, before I go to this verse, one thing that I must say that Allah commands us, saying in chapter seventeen, verse twenty nine, This is in Surah Bani Israel, the chapter before Al Kahf. Okay, Allah mentions that. And do not let your hand be tied to your neck, nor stretch it forth to its utmost reach. Simply meaning that do not be stingy. stingy. Okay? Allah is prohibiting us not to do so. Yet, there are people, they are living the life of something that pretty much everyone wishes for. But there is no peace. Okay? And whatever the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses one with, okay, all the wealth would go against him or her on the day of Qiyamah. Okay. And whenever we die, what are we taking us, uh, taking, uh, taking us, nothing but a piece of cloth, the white cloth that we would be wrapping up, uh, would be wrapped up with. As I was uh, reading earlier, that وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. This is something crucially important that we need to pay attention to because it is the base of everything in Al-Islam. If this is not intact, as the previous speaker, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Nasr al Khair al-Libi mentioned, then whatever you do would be fruitless. The base which is, let's say, the foundation of anything. Even if we are to build something, we, we stay there. To a degree, our clothes get dirty so that the construction workers don't cheat when they are uh, putting the foundation of any building, right? But when it comes to Al-Islam, we don't put that effort whatsoever. We don't put that effort at all. Wal-Iyadu Billah. That is why the calamities that we are going through, the tests that we are going through, and still we're failing, we don't still take lesson from it. Okay? When Allah tests someone, the true believers would always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would want to be tested. Why? So that whatever the sins, whether it is open or secret, okay, whether it is known or unknown, they want the sins to be forgiven. Through the tests. As for those who are not believers, not only would they uh, you know, curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would curse even the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would curse even their themselves and they would continue to do so. And those who do not call any other deity beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'allahi ilahan akhar other deity beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And they do not kill, uh, uh, not kill such a person as Allah has forbidden. Allah made haram except for just cause. Meaning life for life, eye for eye, hand for hand. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Nor commit illegal sexual intercourse. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ And whosoever does this, shall receive athama وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ athama. Is it just there? Is it done there? No. Allah says يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ muhana. The punishment would be multiplied on the day of Qiyamah. Why is it called Qiyamah? Why? Can anyone tell me? Why is it called Qiyamah? Standing. Yes. Standing. standing, yes. Can anyone tell me the duration of standing? 50, yes, 50,000 years. Again, question. Should it be counted as the Dunya calendar? No. The Gregorian one or even the Hijri calendar for the sake of uh, argument? No. تَعْرُجُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ إِلَيْهِ فِي يَوْمٍ كَانَ مِقْدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً one day would be equivalent to 50,000 years. One day would be felt like 50,000 years. One day. 
This is in Surah Al-Ma'arij. وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ muhana. Punishment would be multiplied. Punishment over punishment over punishment. Not a single thing would be left. If for every single action, one would be punished. For every single action. Even if it is an atom level of sin. Yes. وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ muhana. Allah says that he would be there for eternity. Muhana means what? Someone who is humiliated. Allah says later on, Illa. This is the istithna. This is the exception. Man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha. All the sins that we have committed, then the believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not done, and the good action is not done, then you will be even more humiliated. So Allah still gives us way. Allah still, Allah still wants us to beg for his forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still wants us to turn to him. Okay. Allah still wants us to run to him. That is why the theme of the conference, flee to Allah, fafirru ilallah, in Surah al dhariyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so. So, illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan saliha, faulaika yubaddilullah. Yubaddilullah madha? Sayyatihim hasanat. Except those who repent, repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and did the righteous deeds, good actions. فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ the, their evil actions would be turned other way around. Their evil action would become good actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would replace their evil actions with what? Good actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forever forgiving and forever most merciful. Question, what is the difference between Rahim and Ar-Rahman? Ar-Rahim and Ar-Rahman. Rahman is general mercy and Rahim is specific to believers. That's the one, yeah? Are you agreeing with it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, he said that Rahman is general mercy and Rahim is specific. Yes. Is that what he wanted to say? Rahman. MashaAllah. Rahman uh, will be in Qiyamah and Rahim in Dunya. Other way around. Other way around. Okay. Other way around. Rahman means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still merciful generally even on the kuffar. Even those who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even those who do not even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even those who say that there is no God, God doesn't exist, even on them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. But again, this would be turned against him on the day of Qiyamah. Okay. Can a man be called Rahman? Can a man be called just Rahman? No. Abdul Rahman. Can a man be called Rahim? Yes. Rahim can be called. Rahim. Not with Al. Remember, that's why I, when I asked the last two questions, I made it very clear. Rahman is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even without Al. Okay, if someone asks. So that is why Abdul Rahman. As for Rahim, Yes, a human being can be merciful. You are, you are merciful towards each other when he wronged you, yet you are still showing mercy to him. You are forgiving him. That is actually a person's name can be Rahimullah. One of the names of him, uh, Muslims can be like that. Okay, Rahim, yes. But Rahman on its own, no. So, the difference between Rahman and Rahim, clear. Okay, in Surah Al Fatiha, we say, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, right? The second verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. So, 
إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفور رحيما So there are some hadith that I would like to bring here uh, part by part because the verse is quite long والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر So the first thing is that those who do not invoke anyone beside Allah سبحانه وتعالى as an ilah Okay, not even aliha. By the way, there is a female form of ilah as well in the Quran. Allah mentions that doesn't mean that it is actually something that we need to worship. It is what shaitan does. That is why in the past, so in Surah Al-Najm, Allah mentions, أَفَرَأَيْتُمُ اللَّاتَ وَالْعُزَّةِ Al-ilah is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Aziz is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what Shayateen did to the people in the, uh, of, of the past. Allat, the ta at the end, ta of femininity. Allah exposes them. Then, al-uzza. Femininity of? Aziz wal billah. That is what they ended up doing. And that is what is happening, even to this day. You would see that they end up worshipping even female. That they, they, they don't see. Worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is where we must firm ourselves upon Tawheed. Not just knowing the categories of Tawheed. Rather firmly believing in it in our hearts. And showing it into our actions. Tawheed al-Uluhiyya wa huwa Tawheed al-Ibadah Tawheed al-Rububiyya Tawheed of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what? Lordship Al-Uluhiyya wal-Ibadah is worship Al-Asma wa Sifat Names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala There is the fourth one though The ulama also came with the fourth one What could be the fourth one? No. What, can, what is the fourth one? I know you haven't heard it, but <laughs> there is something. There is something. I would. Yeah? Muta? Muttaba, something like that. Muttaba, something like that. Around that one. I think you said it already. <laughs> I'll let you off. So basically, it is Tawheedul Mutaba'a. I will explain to you what Tawheedul Mutaba'a means. Remember Al Ikhlas Wal Mutaba'a that we mentioned? Al Mutaba'a is singling out in imitating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to do what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was the perfect example for us. Okay. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Okay. Remember, in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa for you is Uswatun Hasana, a great example. Who are those who would seek this great example? Those who seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, yawm al akhir as well as the last day, to be successful. And one of their main characteristics would be, Dhakar Allah kathira. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala limited to just saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar? Best form of dhikrullah is one of the best form, rather. On the top is as salah that's why Allah mentions How did Muhammad Sallallahu do the sujood? It is mentioned in the Sunnah of Rasulullah How did Muhammad Sallallahu do the ruku'? It is mentioned in the Sunnah of Rasulullah How did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do the qiyam? It is mentioned in the Sunnah of Rasulullah Okay, even the qiyam. When we're standing next to each other, are we standing like feet very close to each other? No, rather our right foot uh, uh, one's right foot would touch the other's left foot. Feet need to be straight from the back, ankle to ankle, shoulder to shoulder. Even the qiyam. Everything is detailed in the sunnah of Rasulullah <laughs> That is why Tawheed al-Mutaba'ah I brought here. Okay. Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Hab al-Wasabi al-Abdali al-Yamani brings it in the book Aysar uh, al-Shuruhi ala al-Qawl al-Mufid fi adillat al-Tawheed. He brings this, uh, this category. Tawheed al-Mutaba'ah singling out in imitating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to worship who? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do hope it is clear. 
This is the fourth category of Tawheed now. So, a hadith that is recorded by Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi in his Musnad where Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentions that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inni la'arifu akhira ahli nari khurujan minan nar wa akhira ahli al-jannati dukhulan ila al-jannah yu'ta bi rajulin fayakul nahu anhu kibara dhunubihi wa salu an sigariha qal fayuqal lahu amilta yawma kadha كذا وكذا وعملت يوم كذا كذا وكذا فيقول نعم لا يستطيع أن ينكر من ذلك شيئا فيقال فإن لك بكل سيئة حسنة فيقول يا ربي عملت أشياء لا أراها ها هنا I know the last person رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying that I know the last person who will be brought forward from the hell and the last person who will enter Jannah even though it was mentioned earlier a man will be brought and it will be said Take away his major sins, Al-Kaba'ir. And ask him about his minor sins, Al-Sagha'ir. So it will be said to him, On such and such a day you did such and such. And on such and such a day you did such and such. He will say yes and he will not be able to deny anything. On the day of Qiyamah even the Kuffar would not be able to deny anything. Even the Kuffar. Yet they will take the risk of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll see what happens at the end. That is the statement that they come. Even if you ask them about, invite them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will try to deny. To a degree even they will say, that is your opinion. But this is not my opinion. Everyone came with different opinion, everyone started writing it. Even to a degree they doubt the Quran. Unfortunately, we see this very trait amongst the Muslims. So as Muslims, we need to be mindful of what we are saying. Okay. So much so that there is whosoever goes against the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have humiliated life in this dunya. Okay. Allah mentions that وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Whosoever turns away from my remembrance for him will be مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ for, for him would be a severe lifestyle. Okay? Life that would be absolutely miserable. Okay? On the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment, we will resurrect him as a blind person. He would say, Qala Rabbi lima hashartani a'ma. This is in Surah Taha, Allah is mentioning it. Why did you resurrect me as a blind person? وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Whereas I was from those who, who, who used to see. قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَّسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى When you were alive, the ayat, our verses, our signs came to you. But you forgot at that time. On the day of Qiyamah, you will be forgotten. Meaning your sight was taken for a good reason. Because you were given plenty of opportunities. Yet you did not take advantage of those opportunities. Rather, you just didn't care. You just left it till the last minute. As a result, this, this is the consequence that you would go through. You would be resurrected as a blind person. Now, we see, subhanAllah, those who are going to the universities, those who are doing work re related to the subject that they choose. When it comes to assignments, you will see them to be always ahead. Always ahead. Okay. How one needs to be uh, ready for Harvard referencing, how one needs to go through the bibliography, how one needs to come with three styles of referencing if someone is studying uh, law. Okay whether it is three years or six years of law, all these, we see them always ahead. Ahead of everyone. They have competition for that. But one thing, billah, they forget is that these, whatever they are doing in terms of their education, they, they would just benefit them in the dunya. In the akhirah, it would mean nothing. They would be from those who are lost. Because in the dunya, they wanted to have all the opportunities through the competition. But they lost the Akhirah. 
As a result, technically they lost even the dunya and the akhirah as well. How? Because you were just not with yourself. You did not focus on the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would favor his servants. Okay? Would favor his servants to be always on the safe side. خسر الدنيا والآخرة. The person has lost the dunya as well as the akhirah. ذلك هو الخسران المبين. We have the opportunity. We must uh, take advantage of those opportunity. As the hadith goes, then it will be said to him, for every evil deed, you now have one good merit. For every evil deed, you now have good merit. One good merit. He will say, Ya Rabbi, I did things that I do not see here. Okay, Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala who said, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled so broadly that his molars could be seen. This hadith also is recorded by Imam Muslim al Hajjaj rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded that Abu Jabir heard from Makhul say, a very old man with sunken eyes came and said, Ya Rasulullah, a man betrayed others and did immoral deeds, actions that are immoral. And there was no evil deed which he did not do. If his sins were to be distributed among the whole mankind, they would all be doomed. Is there any repentance for him? Rasulullah said, Aslamt, have you become Muslim? He said, As for me, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah. With no partner or associate. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his servant and messenger. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after he announced the shahada, shahada of la ilaha illallah as well, shahada Muhammad rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِرٌ لَكَ مَا كُنْتَ كَذَلِكَ وَمُبَدِّلُ سَيِّئَاتِكَ حَسَنَاتِ وَمُبَدِّلُ سَيِّئَاتِكَ حَسَنَاتِ Allah will forgive you for whatever you have done like that and will replace your evil actions with what? With something that are good. All the evil actions are white. Replaced by what? By good actions. Yet, as Muslims, we are not coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are turning other than the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma amin. Allah continues saying, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ And whosoever repents and does righteous good deeds, then indeed Allah, uh, 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 indeed Allah subhanahu, uh, indeed He has repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the tawbah that was meant to be. The sincere tawbah. Tawbah with sincerity. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Mentions وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ Okay, another characteristics. But those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to do good actions. About them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in chapter uh, 4 verse 110 وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءَ أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهِ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Whosoever does an evil action or wrongs himself, yadlim nafsa, transgresses himself, committed, commits zulm upon himself. Thumma yastaghfirillah. And then uh, seeks forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yajidillah. He will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ghafura wa rahima. Ghafura rahima. He will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the most forgiving. He will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the most merciful. Rahim is reserved for the believers. So even as believers, may Allah forbid, if we end up committing sins, or even if we beat ourselves up with many other things, even the thoughts, so much so that we keep belittling ourselves, which shaitan loves very much. Okay? Shaitan loves to do what? To make us doubt ourselves. That is actually zulm to a degree. Or yadlim nafsa. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a way out that yastaghfirillah. Six forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yajidillaha ghafur rahima. He would find the person to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the person will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the most forgiving and the most merciful. Surah Al-Zumar, 
chapter 39, verse, verse 53, one of my favorite verses, Allah mentions it. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Look at the prohibition in this very ayah. Allah says that, لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O Muhammad, to those that, O oh, my servants, those who wasted themselves, okay, transgressed upon themselves, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. When Allah says, إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Indeed, Allah سبحانه وتعالى forgives all the sins. إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Indeed, Allah سبحانه وتعالى is He who is the most forgiving and the most merciful. As long as there is no shirk. Why? This verse that I read to you, verse 53 of Surah Az-Zumar, few verses later, Allah says that وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ And remember when it was revealed to you, O Muhammad, and those before you, meaning all the prophets and messengers that came before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the prophets and messengers before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What revealed? was to them that لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتِ If you have committed shirk, polytheism, لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكِ Your actions are nullified. وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Those who understand Arabic, the lam with fatha here is lam at tawkid. Lam of affirmation here. Lam of affirmation. Like inna. Indeed. And for sure, indeed, you will be from the losers. Min al khasirin. Rather, Balillaha fa'bud wa kum mina shakirin. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be from those who are grateful. Okay. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامَ Allah says that and those who do not bear witness to falsehood. And if they pass by some evil, evil play or evil talk, they pass by it. With what? With dignity. Marru billaghwi, marru kirama. Okay. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ And the, those who, when they are reminded of the ayat or the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا سُمَّ وَعُمْيَانَ They do not fall deaf or blind thereat. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who say, Our Lord, bestow on us from our wives and our offspring the comfort of our eyes. قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And make us leaders of those who have taqwa. What is taqwa? Can anyone tell me? What is taqwa? Did you want to say, were you talking before him? Or you? What were you saying? Okay. Right, right. Somewhat right, I would say. <laughs> Simply because you're Bengali, so I'll let you. <laughs> okay, what is taqwa to you, Jamaiki? That is literal meaning. There can be some more. Wahid. Come on, I wanna, come on, man. I want to give chance to Pakistani, man. <laughs> Allah is always watching. God, consci God consciousness is a little meaning, but Allah okay. subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Be, being aware that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there and He is aware of all the actions that you're doing. Okay. What are the names that come to your mind of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are saying that? Al-Basir. Al Al-Basir, yes. yes. What else? He's listening and he's watching. No, I'm talking about, uh, you said taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. So let's focus on the word watching. Uh -huh. So if we focus on the word watching, uh, al-basir is one of them. What else? Al-Ali. No. Samir yeah. Sami will come later. Uh, al-basir. Al-alim is all knowing. But I'm asking... Of, uh, al -alim as uh, no, I'm saying that if we focus on the word al uh, watching in English, yes? Al Musawwir can be, yes. So Al Basir, what about Al Shaheed? What about Al Raqib? These are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names, by the way. Al Basir, Al Shaheed, Al Raqib. Then comes, of course, 
uh, if you want to add uh, from the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying us you have knowing you have hearing okay then you yeah you can put as uh, ish al alim okay so Yes. Exactly. Al khawf, al khawf. You are right. Yes. So here comes the issue of protecting oneself by being conscious of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Another meaning of taqwa can be like, for example, you're in the battleground and you have something to protect yourself from the enemies blow whether it is the sword blow whether it is you know gun bullet or anything you want to have a bulletproof jacket even to a degree right that is also another meaning of taqwa that you want to protect yourselves from the sins that will lead you to jahannam you want to protect yourselves from the ways that will totally divert you from what from the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are reminded of the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not fall deaf or blind. Whereas we are seeing people are falling deaf or blind. You remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya akhi, it's not important. Tawheed is not important. This is not important. That is not important. What important is unity. Unity on what? Unity. The word unity we're talking about is Tawheed. So if you talk about unity, which is that, uh, uh, Tawheed, then you're wrong. Our unity is in, the, uh, in believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught his sahaba when they were in, before hijrah, where were they? In Mecca. 13 years. That is what we need to look, uh, look at. The unity that you are talking about is tawahud. It is not tawheed. Two different things. Tawheed singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of lordship, in terms of worship, in terms of his asma wa sifat. And the imitation should be of who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, those who have family members, those who have wives, those who have children, you want them to be always upon Surat al-Mustaqim. You want them to be always upon the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that, my dear brothers and sisters, the fathers, the mothers, if you show them what ibadat, ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, then you will have the success. You will see it will be continuous for the next generations. Even if you are dead, you, di you didn't see what was going on. You will see the goodness reaching to your, to, uh, to your qubur rather. Okay, that is why. إذا مات الإنسان انقطع عنه عمله إلا من ثلاث صدقة جارية أو علم ينتفع به أو ولد صالح يدعو له. When uh, one dies, three things except three things all are, you know, uh, uh, all are cut off. صدقة جارية. The continuous charity or the knowledge that benefits that uh, that can be benefited from. One can benefit from a waladun salihun yad'ula or a pious child that would make dua for him. By the way, walad, even though feminists would say something about it, but actually it is not limited to boy. Rather, it is boy and girl both. Because when it comes to amal salih, there is no inequality. Rather, everyone is equal. That is why Allah says, Man amila salihan min dhakarin aw umtha wa huwa as Ustad uh, Nasir Bil Khair Alibi uh, mentioned about it. Ulaika yudzawna al-ghurfata bima sabaru wa yilaqawna fiha tahiyyatan wa salama khalidina fiha hasunat mustaqarran wa muqama. Those will be rewarded with the highest place because of their sabr, because of their patience. Khalidina fiha, therein they shall be met with greetings. Okay. And the word of peace would, uh, and respect. Abiding therein, excellent it is and abode. When they are there, that is the ultimate. That is the ultimate resting place. Only if we follow these steps. The Ibad rahman Okay. قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاءُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, My Lord pays attention to you only because of your dua to him. 
That is what we are missing. We, we are not making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes like a riya. That is a reality. It becomes like a riya. Even when we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not according to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now you have indeed denied. فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ لَوْ لَا دُعَاءُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامًا So the torment will be yours forever. Lizama forever. Okay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the torment of Jahannam. Allahumma amin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us thabat, give us tawfiq to act upon the Quran and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect ourselves, uh, uh, our family members from the fire in the hell or else we will be from those who are, who would be used as an igniting fuel on Jahannam. Allahumma ameen. Hada ma indi wal ilmu inda Allah alayhi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi unib in asabt fa min Allahi wahda wa in akhtaat fa min nafsi wa shaytan fa Allah wa rasuluhu bari'an wa sallallahu wa sallam. Subhanallahu wa bihamdihi subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.